Hello, Floss Tube World. This is Vicki, uh, aka the Virginia Stitcher, coming to you again with my. Uh, this will be Floss Tube number seven. I know it's been uh, about three weeks since I filmed my last video, and I've had some stuff going on. I told you before I was going to StitchCon 2021 in Sharonville, Ohio. I left to go to um, the StitchCon event on June 16th, and uh, so that I, di I didn't want to miss a thing. Registration, uh, the opening started where you could go in and uh, go into this uh, conference center noon on June 17th and I wanted to make sure I was there a day ahead of time because I was driving in from Virginia and it took about mm, eight it's about an eight hour drive to Sharonville Ohio from Fredericksburg Virginia so I got to the uh, stitch con and had a great time so what I want to do is um, kind of fill you guys on in on what has been going on since my last video uh, in the past three weeks what uh, stitching wise and a little bit of life things that were going on. So the first thing before I went to StitchCon, um, I did get a little stitching in. So I wanna go ahead and show you what I was able to get done between my last video and the few days before I left for StitchCon. So I was working on, well, I had a new start, you know, cause squirrel, that, that is just me. I can't not start new things. I, I, I've got starditis really bad, and um, I think maybe next year I may have to tell myself that I'm going to have to uh, slow my starts down so I can get some finishes, so I can actually get some progress done on things that I do have started. So I started by Plum Street Samplers, a new constellation. I started this one uh, before I left for StitchCon, and I, I stitched on this for a couple of days and um, got a little bit of progress done on this one. So let me show you what I was able, let me see what dates I actually worked on that. I um, keep myself a little progress sheet that I had done up and my scribbly handwriting and stuff like that is on here. But um, I st actually started this one on June 14th, I worked on it June 14th and 15th. And then, like I said, I left the 16th to go to StitchCon. So this is what I was doing for the couple of days before I left. And I was working on this one. And it looks like I put the sticker to the Ada. Oh no, I'm actually working on this on 28 count because this does have a little bit of one over one. And um, I wanted to get some practice on trying to do that. So I'm starting out with um, 28 counts so that I don't you know, I make sure that I can see it and know how, you know, practice doing it before I move on to anything bigger. But this is where I was able to get to in the two days. And my very first time to do one over one on 28 count like this, in this type of fashion, I did this June 14th date in here. So, um, I was able to get just this top, and I'm always looking at it backwards. I'm trying to get practice here to figure out what I'm doing here, <laughs> so I, I don't get messed up, but I was just doing the little corner. Uh, I always start up in the, usually start up in the left-hand corner on my pieces. So that's how far I was able to get on a new constellation by Plum Street Samplers. And then I left on the 16th, drove up to Sharonville, Ohio, and, um, I had the hotel room to myself. I, I uh, stayed at the La Quinta because that was where the late night stitching room was gonna be located and I thought that'll be easy. I can just go get in the elevator, go up to my room and be good to go. So, because I knew I'd be tired and not wanna have to drive afterwards. So, I worked on, um, <clears throat> at the beginning of StitchCon, I worked on some more on my, uh, Huckleberry Farm by the Blue Flower. And it looks like these. Let me get it out of its project bag. So it looks like this. Try not to have too much glare there from the window. So I worked some more on this. And again, I was uh, working up in the left-hand corner. And the last time you guys saw this, um, I had some of the Huckleberry Branch done. And I had just start, started on the mountain 
part right under it, and there's a grizzly bear, a brown bear, um, right under it. This piece reminds me a lot of California because of the bears in it. Um, I actually, as a little girl, my dad was in the Navy, and I grew up all over the place. And as a little girl, I lived in uh, California some. So this just reminds me a lot of California. So I was able to get, I had the little snow caps done. So at StitchCon in my hotel room, I think I finished the gray part and then, and had started working some in the green. And then I pulled it back out the first day at StitchCon, which would have been um, that Thursday, I believe it was, or whatever day, the 17th. And by the time I got there and I found a table, you walk in and it's just a, a convention center, a big kind of like ballroom and it's just set up with a bunch of round tables and it, people were already congregating and um, so I'm like, I, I had no idea what table to pick. They all had uh, numbers on them <clears throat> and, excuse me, <clears throat> and I uh, decided on table number 17 because my birthday is April 17th. And I figured, okay, I'll just pick 17. <laughs> so, uh, cause there must've been tables numbered all the way up to 50 something in there. And um, so I just picked that cause it was a little bit kind of towards the front, but not all the way in the front. And I thought it'd be nicely located. It was near the, not too far away from the brag tables, the podium, where if they were gonna make any announcements or say anything. Um, and, uh, the giveaway table was behind me a couple of tables. So um, I picked 17 and I got there and I put my stuff down on the table and I saw a lady just standing there looking around and she looked like she was trying to figure out what table she wanted to sit at. And I was like, come on over, join me. And her name was Maddie. And she was, she's just a wonderful person. I loved her. Uh, her and I got along great. Um, later that day, a little later, a couple hours later, she comes over with a lady named Cindy and had Cindy join our table. <clears throat> now, Maddie was from Washington. She's from Washington, D.C. I'm from Central Virginia, and Cindy is from Northern Virginia. She's up, uh, I believe, Herndon, Virginia. So we're all kind of located in the D.C., Virginia area, and we sat together and, and we'd go to dinner together. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my throat is really bothering me today. Go to dinner together um, and just spend, you know, a wonderful time with each other. We'd go to the late night stitching room. Maddie was staying in the La Quinta also. Cindy was staying in the Hyatt that was connected to the convention center. And then I think the next day, I believe, um, another lady joined our table, table to sit and her name was Deborah or Debbie. And she was there with her daughter. Her daughter doesn't stitch, <clears throat> but her daughter came along with her to um, see the sights of, of the Cincinnati area. Uh, went to the zoo, uh, did some sightseeing, went to a museum, I believe, and things like that. So sometimes Debbie would slip out, spend time with her daughter. She usually ate dinner with her daughter. They were rooming together. Uh, she did not go to the late night stitch room, but we did see her during the day, and she was a really nice lady also. So those two ladies, Cindy and Maddie and I, we would usually go uh, get something to eat together. Um, and things like that in the evening and, and do the late night stitching room and stuff. So, and along with a lot of other people that were there and it was just a fabulous time. I cannot say thank you, thank you, thank you enough to the people who put on StitchCon. It was run by uh, Keepsakes in Sharonville, Ohio. Uh, Barbara is the owner proprietor of the business and she is just a wonderful woman, a wonderful woman. And, uh, of course, Stephanie from uh, Just Keep Stitching works at Keepsakes, and she uh, works really hard at heading up the event also. And the, uh, Keepsakes has their team. So um, Pam uh, and Stephanie from Just Keep Stitching were partly in, you know, in charge. They did most of the registration. Um, when you came in, you got a, a bag. Let me see if I can find it. And I'm sure uh, you guys have probably seen a lot of other YouTubers talk about their stitch con thing, but you got a bag, <clears throat> like a backpack that was filled with a few things. You got your, uh, all of your information that you would need. It came with a passport, your 2021 passport to the stitch con. Has a few freebie charts in here, uh, just a quick peek. 
And it also talked about the schedule for the stitch bus, when it would go back and forth to keepsakes and the La Quinta from the convention center and things like that. So um, that was wonderful. Uh, Part of the thing I did also the first day why I didn't get a lot of stitching was I did get on the stitch bus and I went to keepsakes and oh my goodness, I haven't been in an LNS in probably 15 years and it was awesome. It is a house, a little house and every room is filled to the hilt with cross stitch. The walls are covered in uh, patterns that have been stitched up and um, things like that. So I do have to talk about my haul. I not only shopped at Keepsakes that day, and I told myself I don't need to go back because I spent enough uh, that day. So I thought I can't get back on that stitchy bus. <laughs> I need to behave a little bit. Otherwise I would just buy everything that I loved and I'd be coming back with a suitcase worth of stuff and um, a very big hit to my uh, checking account or my, my accounts, my bank account. So. I had to behave to a point. Um, I had a little bit of a budget in mind. I kind of went a little over the budget because they also had the annex that was open starting on the next day. And um, it was opened every day and it had a trunk show. It had a lot of um, different designers that had um, items in there along with some items still from keepsakes also. Lots of fabric, lots of patterns, things that you could see um, stitched up and that, to me, that makes the difference. That's where YouTube enables me because I see the, you know, I can look at the design chart and think, eh, you know, it looks cute, it looks nice, but it's nothing maybe that I necessarily would be really gung-ho to want to get and stitch. But when I see it stitched up, a lot of times I'm like, oh my gosh, that is gorgeous and I have to have that and I have to stitch it myself. So it's just, you know, it was crazy. In that way. I think this video is going to be all over the place because I do have so much to fill you guys in on. Another thing that we got was a little look like a takeout container with the StitchCon. Uh, it was sealed with the StitchCon sticker and it had a Christmas ornament that could be an ort container that had a sticker of the state of Ohio. And I already have been, about two months ago, I decided I'm going to start collecting my orts. So I am gonna fill this up and probably put some stickers on the back that says 2021. And I have been putting my orts for the last couple of months in this glass jar. So I do have some orts saved. This sits right by my stitchy chair here in my crafting room. Uh, when I'm stitching here, I just drop them, drop them in here as I'm going along and I'm saving those. And sometimes I look at the threads and I think, oh, I know what project that one's from. <laughs> so it's kind of cool. Um, so that, Christmas ornament is going to get filled with orts at the end of the year, and um, I more than likely will show you guys what that looks like once I fill that up. So I did work a little bit that day and late night in the stitching room, um, but I did do a lot of visiting, talking, shopping, and all that kind of things all through the event, and so I didn't get that much stitched. So I was able to just finish this part of this over a couple of the first couple of days at StitchCon. I did just a tiny bit that that daytime and I worked a little bit more in the evening and then I pulled it up at the late night stitching room and I would stay up till two o'clock. Uh, one night, the last night in the stitching room, I stayed up actually till three o'clock in the morning. I was talking to uh, a wonderful lady named Nicole who had some beautiful um, things on the brag table and um, her and I got talking and at the late night stitch room and the next thing I know, a guy standing there waiting to lock the door to the stitching room down off the lobby of the La Quinta um, so that, you know, kind of like, ladies, come on, you know, I mean, he might as well flash the lights to tell us it's time to get out and go to our rooms. So I stayed up to three in the morning on the last night there and uh, and was stitching and talking and just, uh, it, was aw it was awesome, the whole thing. So I did finish this. Um, this is being stitched on uh, 16 count Ada in, uh, by Picture This Plus in the colorway Glacier. And um, so that's how far I was able to get on my blue flower design called Huckleberry Farm. And they did have this in the trunk show in the annex at the convention center. They had this, the model stitched up. They had a, the, the blue flower had a section at the trunk show. So 
um, I was able to see that one fully finished and it, it's just really pretty. Okay, I did not make notes. Um, I'm trying to just kind of go as I went. I guess I can show you, well, let me show you what else I worked on at StitchCon. I told you I was sitting with two lovely ladies that we, um, uh, Maddie and Cindy, Madeline and Cindy, and we had gone, all gone to keepsakes at the same time together. And we saw a piece that was sitting near the cutting table at Keepsakes. And um, Liz Matthews was actually at the StitchCon uh, Weekend B that we were at. She is a lovely lady. I have got to tell you, she's just, she's just wonderful. She's fabulous. I got to talk to her a little bit. But while we were standing there getting ready to check out, and we see this piece hanging on the wall. And Liz Matthews' mother is Kathy Barrick. And Kathy Barrick has uh, designed some uh, things for carriage house sampling. And we saw this stitched up on the wall. And this is a Quaker study by carriage house samplings. And we all fell in love with, with the model that was stitched up. Now, we decided while we were there, and Liz Matthews was standing right behind us, the ladies at work at Keepsake go, uh, well, her daughter's right there behind you. And we were like, oh my God you know star moment so um, we said we're gonna start your mom's one of your mom's designs and what we decided we were gonna do we bought all the all of the uh, the fabric and the floss that we needed for this to finish you know start working on this and we were gonna we wanted to start on it at StitchCon together and we're keeping updated on each other's progress and when my plan is when I go back to StitchCon and I'm planning on, unless something happens, you know, hell freezes over and the creek rises or whatever, I am going to be at StitchCon 2022. I have already decided. I loved it. I want to go back. Um, I'm hoping to be able to meet back up with Cindy and Maddie and, um, you know, and things again and a bunch of the other ladies that I talked to there. Um, but I want to finish it at StitchCon 2022, start it at 2021, and finish it next year and ring Pam's bell. I want to be able to go up to the podium and ring the bell for this project. Now this one, um, this is how far I was able to get at StitchCon. I haven't touched it since, but I used a beautiful Threadworks variegated color that I picked up at Keepsakes in this um, 16 count Ada fabric. I'm doing mine with 16 count Ada. Cindy's doing hers on a linen. I'm not sure what her, so is Maddie. Maddie's is a color like this, but Cindy's doing hers with red thread. And Maddie picked a color from Threadworks that's a, a darker, very, very similar to this, but a darker colorway than this one. And um, this is the Threadworks. I grabbed two skeins to make sure I had enough. And this is Threadworks, is that upside down? Probably, no, here we go. 1043, and this is what it, the beautiful variegated colors that are in this one. So I bought, picked up two skeins of this and my 16 count fabric, and I'm not sure um, what the colorway of this one is. Usually I try to keep the sticker Oh, well, this wouldn't have come with a sticker because Keepsakes doesn't put stickers on their fabric. They just cut it. Oh, wait a minute. I did put the, I uh, put their little tag, their little tag. Um, it is, and they write the project for you on it, a Quaker study. And this is 16 count Ada in the color. It's by Mystic Fiber, Mystic Fibers, and it's called All the Things with the Threadworks and All the Things. And this is what I started at StitchCon. So this is my StitchCon piece for 2021. <clears throat> and I, I wanna try to make that a, a kind of like a tradition that I start something there, finish it the next year at the next StitchCon event. And um, that, that's gonna be my plans to be able to do. Um, so this was a purchase at Keepsakes. So um, that will segue into all of my purchases because that is all I was able to stitch at StitchCon for those few days, um, the Huckleberry Farm and the Quaker Study. Those are the two things that I stitched on while I was at StitchCon.
I took four things with me and didn't get around to <laughs> all of it. So, um, let me, I have three bags here full of stuff. This, these are the keepsakes bags and they also had them at the annex. And I have just loaded up, I tried to put everything kind of together so that it would be hopefully a little bit easier for um, me to show all of you what I have here. Um, one of the things is they had a lot of freebie charts. I'm going to try to cover most of the chart, but they had a lot of freebies sitting around the um, at keepsakes and also had some at the annex. So I picked up this freebie by Cherrywood Design Studios. And I also picked up at the annex this freebie chart <clears throat> from the Blue Flower. So the StitchCon one. So those were a couple of freebies that I did pick up. I did not bring anything home from, of course I dropped something on the floor. It's not a video by Vicki if I don't drop stuff on the floor. Um, I did not pick anything up off of the giveaway table, the freebie table. Um, I looked a few times and I thought, I'm really trying to be selective because I have so much. Um, I have enough to do for five lifetimes, so I'm trying to be careful, but I still buy a lot. Um, one of the things I saw in these models were stitched up and they were just really pretty. And um, they're by Mill Hill. They're the little um, perforated paper that come with everything that you need to do the project, your beads, the button, the threads, the perforated paper, the design. So it's a kit. And I picked this up um, in one of the rooms. I picked up latte and cappuccino they were really pretty done up and I haven't done any of these so I thought you know by my coffee station in my dining room off my kitchen I wanted to um, be able to display these so I picked up those two um, kits and I also picked up um, this from the oh I forgot to turn off my phone this from the keepsakes they had the model of this one stitched up and it was just adorable. So I got this um, pattern and this one is by uh, Waxing Moon Designs. It's called Eat, Drink, and Be Merry. I also picked up this little, I'm, I actually, I usually buy these big projects that are gonna take me forever and a day to finish. But I did pick up this little tiny, um, tiny Lizzie Kate Quicket. And they had the model stitched up and it was just so cute and so tiny and adorable. And inside even comes with the little little beads that go um, at the bottom of at the top of his boots right here. So I loved what it said. Where's the party? <laughs> and it's just so cute. So I picked that one up. Also, I saw this model stitched up over at um uh, keepsakes and had to get this at keepsakes and this one's called a well-dressed man by the Cricut collection and it had these little snowmen that were just so cute and um, I, I believe it comes with this bonus pattern in it I haven't opened it to check but I'm going to be stitching this so um, pick that up um, this one is by um, Manny Dodonna, and it sounds of freedom pillows. So those three pillows are in there. And I love that. That might be my smalls exchange for next year. We will see. And then when I was over at the annex, um, Sue Hillis had a part in the trunk show and she had a bunch of her designs stitched up and a whole rack full of her patterns. And, um, if I were just to look at the pattern, I probably would have never got these, even though they are pretty, but they are gorgeous stitched up, gorgeous. So I picked up by Sue Hillis, The Most Wonderful Time, and this one was stitched up over there and it was beautiful, beautiful. I had to limit myself because all of them were beautiful, but I limited myself to three. And then I got one for Halloween and this one's called Witch Hat. Again, by Sue Hillis, beautiful. Loved the colors in that one. And then a fall one, it's called Hello Autumn 
this pickup truck and it is it was just too cute i loved it so i have a christmas a halloween and a fall from sue hillis that i picked up also at the um at keepsakes i picked up this prairie schooler called the pumpkin patch and i really really i liked both but you know you know me i like the big if you've watched my any of my if you watch my whip parade I like the big ones, you know, these big, big projects. Why not go big or go home? So I am going, you know, I got, I picked this one up. Did not pick up any fabric or flosses or anything for these. I did for the, um, for the Quaker study. So I could start it right there. Um, and then I saw on the wall, I'm doing the shores of Hawk Run Hollow and I'm going to do it as a memorial piece for my father. But um, I saw the Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow stitched up. Let me go ahead and take it out of the plastic. And the design was just gorgeous hanging on the wall. And I looked and I looked and I looked and I could not find the, the pattern for it. I think that might have been sold out. So I ordered it from 123 Stitch because I just had to have it. And when I saw that it came in stock at 123 Stitch, I jumped on it and picked this piece up. And um, another thing that I went ahead and ordered at 123 Stitch while I ordered this pattern was the, um, when I was sitting there stitching, one day Cindy said, what, what kind of needles do you use? And I said, I don't know, whatever I can pick up. I don't have a local needle workshop, so I just pick up whatever I can pick up at Michael's and Hobby Lobby usually. And that's what I have been using. Well, she said, try these Pat Carson's, Pat's favorite needles. And I did, and I loved it. It went through my fabric nice and smooth. It was a lot easier, somewhat easier to thread because it, they're they're just so smoothly made. There's no burrs on them. And so with that pattern, I went ahead and picked up Pat's favorite needles. They come in a 25 pack on one, two, three stitch. And I got the number, uh, the size 26 needles. Love these, I love these. So I'm glad that she, um, was nice enough to let me use one and see how much I like them. So I also um, picked up um, in the annex, they had tables full of fabric just laid out in beautiful display like eye candy. And so I picked up some fabrics. <laughs> I am building my stash. If um, Armageddon comes about, you know, the zombie, zombie apocalypse, as my husband would say. If it ever comes, um, I can just stay locked in my house and stitch. <laughs> so, if we get um, huge snowstorms, oh my goodness. Um, I may have to put my glasses on for this. And of course, I dropped those on the floor too. Let me get my other pair. I drop everything on the floor. I am such a klutz. I am so sorry, people. I try to be organized. I try to be, you know just the most amazing YouTuber and you get me. So I'm <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I am what I am and uh, I don't edit. So you get what you get. Um, this one is, uh, this one is by Under the Sea Fabrics. It's an opalescent um, linen, 32 count linen and this color Galene. So that's what it, the tag said. And this is the fabric, beautiful. And I got a fat, they would cut the pieces for you. We need a fat, in fat quarters, fat halves, or you could get the whole, whole yard. So <clears throat> I got this piece of that. And what else did I get? Actually, this is the little piece left over from my Quaker study. I went ahead and cut off. So I'll have a piece that I can do a smaller chart on. I really do need to stop the noise coming in on my phone so you guys don't have to hear it blinging all day. And then I picked up a fat quarter of Caramel Macchiato by um, 18 Count Ada fat quarter and they put a sticker over um, the designer and I can't peel the sticker off. But I got this Caramel Macchiato um, 16 count, or no, 18 count, right? What did it say? 
does it say? 18 count, the staples right over the 18 count. So I picked up this <clears throat> fat quarter of 18 count caramel macchiato. Love the modeling in that, it's just beautiful. So I got that piece of fabric. I actually went over to the annex a couple of times and I said, I'm not allowed over here anymore and I stayed out. because, <laughs> like, like I said, I get in trouble. This one is an 18 count Ada Cotton. Oh, it's fiber on a whim. So this one was fiber in a, on a whim because it's the same tag and I can read this one better. And this one is called Night Sky. So here is Night Sky and I got a fat quarter of this one. Love the modeling. I could see this one for a beautiful uh, Halloween design. Um, so pretty, pretty, pretty. Got that. And then I got from Fiber on a Whim, uh, pistachio, another 18 count, uh, fat quarter. And this one is this color. It's kind of greenish, a little bit of a um, muted green. Love, love the modeling in this also. Very pretty fabrics they had there. And I love when I can see them in person and see what they actually look like. Now, <clears throat> oh, I did pick up something to work on, another one, and I threw it down in the pile. Um, the one, the little tiny Lizzie Kate Quicket with the elf legs that says, where's the party? I picked up this piece, and I went ahead and got a big piece, and I can stitch something else on it, but I loved this green. And this one is, where's, uh, they put on here, is, I got it for where's the party, 28 count Jobulin. So, beautiful green color, beautiful, beautiful. Love that, picked that up at Keepsakes. So that was the other one I had picked up there and the rest were all at the Annex. This one is a fat quarter of, <clears throat> this is by the Steel City Stitchers, um, Jody, and it's a 32 count Lugana and it does not have a color name on it. Look at this, it's like a purpley um, blue color. It's just beautiful. Leans kind of like a gray purple. Very pretty, love that. Got a quarter of, um, of another one by um, Still City Stitchers. Uh, it's called Dusk. And this is a 32 count even weave also. I picked up this piece of fabric. And like I said, I had to tell myself to stay away from the fabric table after, after a while. <clears throat> and then I got a fat quarter of this 32 count Lugana. Does not have the color on it either. But I did, um, this one's kind of a, almost like a baby blue, little darker baby blue. Really pretty. So I picked up all of those fabrics. And those were the patterns. And another thing that they had at the um, at the uh, annex, and some of the ladies had these, I forgot what they call them. It's kind of like a floss catcher. Uh, the, when they're working, it's a, a piece of felt board that you're, you're, you can stick your uh, flosses to and then it won't move around. You know, you don't have orts falling on the floor and things like that. So this was in there and it's um, cross stitch fancies and it's folded this way. It has this little snap that folds it up for you so you can carry this to places. But when you unsnap it, it's um, actually uh, flannel fabric in here. This has a magnet in it. So your scissors, your needle minder, whatever can stick to this. And it has uh, a um, hook and also a loop. And I was using this at StitchCon. The scissors I just had fell out, but my scissors, a needle minder, one of the ones I picked up from a lovely lady named Kara that was there, a crafty Kara. She was giving out these needle minders, and I have another one that she gave me. She said, here, take another one. She was so sweet. Nice lady. So um, I picked this up in the annex and put this to use while I was there. And then I remember telling you guys that 
I wanted to go in and, and look at the floss wall. Not only did they have a floss wall, they had a floss room. And they had not every floss out there in the world, but they had quite a bit. So I have been interested in sulky threads and I don't have any. So I did pick up this pack of sulky. This one was like an autumn toned pack. Picked this up there at Keepsakes. Went ahead and got that. And a bag full of floss. So now I have a floss stash because I'm not in any kit club. Um, I started back into cross stitch during the pandemic and it was really hard to get into any clubs or anything like that. Um, over at the annex, one day I went, they did have some of these coloring cotton and I do not have any coloring cotton. And these were on a little bit of a sale over there. Um, I think they were only $2 a piece and they're normally two fifty. dollars So I picked up, you know, about 12 of these different colors. I'm not gonna rank, go through all of the colors. But I picked these up one day when I was over at the annex. I think it's the same day I saw this and picked that up. So I got those and then I just stared at the floss walls in that room and I went crazy and I picked up several, several different colors. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm on a, gotta watch what you spend for a little while. <laughs> so, Use what you have, Vicki, use what you have. But these are all um, classic color works. So I just went crazy on the, with all these classic color works. And what I like to do is I find, I like to find the ones that have more variegation because if they don't have variegation, I'll just use DMC because it's cheaper. What's the point? So um, I do like, when, so that's what I was looking for. I was looking for all these beautiful ones that I thought were really pretty and came with some nice variegation in them. So if you can see, um, like prickly pear, this one here, you can see the variegation going on in there. It goes from a lighter pink to a darker pink, you know, um, all of these different beautiful, beautiful flosses. So I picked up a variety of colors and ones that were more variegated and things. So I did get go crazy in the floss room. And then they had a basket when you first walked in. Uh, one of the things in the very first room of keepsakes, they had a big basket and it had Garon Toten bag grind guards in it. So I did pick up an 11 by 11 grind guard from Garon Toten bags. Let's see if I can get it out of here. Well, maybe not. This one is a like a fall colored one. There we go. Sorry for the crinkling. Let me get it out of here for you. But I picked up this one. So an 11 by 11 is most of what I use for Q-snaps. And what I like about the Garon Toten bag um, grime guards is they come a little extra wider than some so that you can tuck your extra fabric up in the grime guard to help kind of contain it, put this down here. Um, so speaking of that, what did I do? Uh, one of the things I picked up at the annex also, um, and I'm using some, let me show you here. Hold on, hold please while I get my crazy self here. Okay, I might as well show you this. Um, when I got back from, when I was at StitchCon, I also at Keepsakes, they had some ex jude design fabric there. And I needed a really large piece for my I'll, I'll, I'll Be Home series by Twin Peak Primitives that I had showed you previously that I wanted to get started on. That looks like this. And Pam Schaefer had this on the brag table, so I was able to lay my eyes on this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I went over to Keepsakes and I told the ladies there, I'm looking for a piece of fabric big enough to do um, I'll Be Home and what will work for it. So they were showing me different fabrics and this one is one by X Jude Designs. And I started on this as soon as I got home. 
So before my all my family came and invaded my house, I got a couple of days of work on this. So this is just the top of, so this is a whip that I was working on. This is just the top of the very first uh, house for January here. It's just the roof and uh, some of this tree branch. So, and the corner bo border to get started there. But this um, is a beautiful piece of fabric. Um, love, love, love it. It's on a 16 count Ada by Extra Designs. Did I write down? I don't know. I forgot what the name, I don't know if they gave me the piece of paper with the name. I think it's actually still attached to it. But what I wanted to show you, one of the other things I picked up at the Annex, and a lot of people use these. I didn't have any and I wanted to try some. And it's these little magnetic bungee ties. So I just picked up a few because then, you know, and I was testing it out on this really rather large piece of Exude Design fabric. So I picked up these two and this one, I just picked up three there and I found out that I really, really do like it. You can roll your fabric up and just kind of attach it. Um, if you haven't seen it before, it's magnetized. You just take it and loop it and it just sticks together with magnets and it just nicely holds it without crimping up your fabric too much. So I, um, let me take this off the Q-snap so I can show you guys, but it, um, it was, it's really holding my, um, my fabric nicely for me. So I ordered some more off of Amazon. Um, they haven't come in yet. They're, I think I ordered a 12 pack and they're just called, I just searched for magnetic bungee ties to, um, to find those on, on Amazon. So if you're looking for those, you can get these on Amazon. They're not exclusive to, um, needle workshops. Yep, the tag for this fabric is stuck in here, and it is by x Designs. Uh, this one is called Marbled, wait a minute, Painter? Let me look, let me read. Marbled Pointer, it looks like. And I got a fat half, so that would be big enough. And I've got all of this fabric, and it's all scrunched, and, but you can see the beautiful modeling going on in there. Isn't that just gorgeous? Love it. Um, they knew exactly what pattern I was talking about because when I said the I'll Be Home by Twin Peak Primitives that Pam Schaefer did, and they go, yes, yes, yes. This would look gorgeous on it. And I trusted the ladies, I purchased it, and I'm loving it. So that was something that I've been working on since I got back from StitchCon. Let me see if there was anything else in the bottom of my bag here. Oh yeah, just a couple of little, a couple more little things I picked up at the Annex um, over at the Convention Center. A little needle minder, it's a sunflower. So I got a pretty little needle minder and a piece of wax for my threads because I don't, I don't have any wax. The other thing that I got while at StitchCon were all these giveaways that these ladies were doing, they were so generous and wonderful. Um, I went by a table and I, I don't remember the lady's name, but she was stitching on a beautiful piece of fabric, beautiful. And I said, wow, I really like your fabric. And she said, thank you very much. She goes, I actually work for Mystique Fibers. And um, she doesn't, she's not the dyer herself, but she works with them. And she said, here, have this piece of fabric. So she handed me a uh, lemongrass, Ada. It's an opalescent 16 count. Um, it's a 13 by 18 piece. And it is just a beautiful green. <laughs> I, was, I was like, wow, thank you so much. So this is what she gave me. And it is um, really pretty green modeled opalescent um, fabric. So I know I'm gonna find something to stitch on this. And this is her card. She handed me the card. Wait a minute. Sorry about that. So if anybody's interested in ordering anything from Mystic Fabrics, there's all the information. Nice lady. I just was so, that was so kind of her to give that to me. 
Um, also, another table was given away these little goodie bags. It has a pen, some buttons, uh, measuring tape, floss, all kinds of things, all kinds of goodies in here. So that was sweet. They said, here, take one, pick one out of the basket. And then, I mean, at that same table where they had that, another lady at that table was handing away all of these little, um, she called them zipper pulls. You could use, she said you could use them for zipper, zipper pulls. You can use them for scissor fobs. I mean, whatever you want. But she had made up a bunch of these and said, you know, pick some. She said, pick a few. So I picked up these four beautiful beaded um, scissor pull, uh, zipper pulls that I'm gonna put on some of my bags. So that I got there. Also, I don't wanna throw these on the floor because they're tiny, <laughs> I don't end up losing them. Um, needle minders, I got needle minders galore. This one was from Brenda, the uh, handwork maniac on YouTube. Loved meeting her. I have watched every single one of her videos. She lives out in Utah and she came to the event. And when she handed this to me, I said, this is the only frog I allow at my stitching table. <laughs> Cute. Love that. Um, Lady Debbie at my table had made up these needle minders. Um, so her magnets, she magnetized them. And she said that they were from a river, the river, uh, river glass um, near where she lives. And then um, all of these needle minders that I picked up. This was um, another one by Crafty Kara. Is that upside down? Um, I actually really got to talk to her at one of the late night stitching rooms. So she had made up these. I think she's actually trying to open a needle workshop. So Crafty Kara, if you ever find any information on her, a sweet woman. And then this beautiful yellow sparkly one. This one's like a piece of glass, a button. All of these ladies were giving away all these needle minders. This one was from Natasha Kellerman. So she was giving out these needle minders. And it has the cicadas on there because, of course, they were having their cicada outbreak. Um, the cicadas were pretty much dead by the time we got there. But what they had done, um, not the day we actually first got there, I don't think. Or maybe it was the first day. It was either Thursday or Friday. The room started getting hotter and hotter in the convention center. You know, because imagine 270 women in a room... Uh, with all the lights on and just stitching away, no windows, and of course it was hot outside. Um, evidently the air conditioning had broke. It wasn't functioning at the um, convention center and they found out it was because a swarm of cicadas had decided to swarm into the ventilation system of the AC and they clogged it up and it stopped. So they had to get it repaired. So the next day when we showed up, it was working and it was all was good. <laughs> so also, uh, got a couple of sets of floss drops that a lady was giving away. And then um, Keepsakes, Barbara, Hill, uh, Barbara Hills with Keepsakes was giving everybody one of these beautiful um, charms to put it together. It has a 2021 logo. And um, she said these were different stones and crystals that you could pick. She laid them all out on the table and said, please pick one, take one home. That was a little going away get goody from her. I think that is everything except um, my smalls exchange. I was I did my smalls exchange the first day. They did it on Friday. Um, my chip, I can't remember the color. They had red, white, and blue chips. So there were three different times for the, the smalls exchange. And I picked up this one. The lady had even... Um, put this sticker on the outside of the box. It was ra all wrapped up and it was wrapped up um, Halloween themed. And I figured, well, I put a Halloween themed piece out. Remember my little pillow um, that said was a trick or treat pillow. And in the box, she had all these goodies in there. So she gave me some Peacemakers uh, size 26 needles. Perfect, because 26 is usually the size that I work with. A um, 
needle minder. Looks like a really pretty guitar pick. And her card says, um, the design that she stitched for me was Potion, Brews, and Spells by Cherished, Cherished Stitches. And it was in the 2016 Just Cross Stitch Halloween issue. And she stitched it on 32 count Pewter Belfast by Picture This Plus and Warlock Road Silken Colors. She said it's one of her favorite um, floss colors that she uses. Let me get it out of the box. Fits in the box, perfect. So she had put it, had done this up. I love it. She even put a 2021 charm down here so I can remember that this was from 2021. Look at the colors of that, that floss. And she, like I said, she said that one was called, what did I do with that card? This floss is Warlock Road Silken Colors. And the fabric is 32 count Pewter Belfast by Picture This Plus. And this was a pattern in the 2016 Just Cross Stitch Halloween issue. Potion, Brews, and Spells. Beautiful, I love it. And she said it's just magnetized in here so I can switch out and put something else in here if I wanted to. I don't think I will. I love this just the way it is and I want to keep it in there. And she also made some floss drops that went along with it. So that was just lovely. And her name is Annette Wright and her YouTube channel is Annette's Acre. So this is her information. The lady who did my smalls exchange. I don't know if you can read that. Hopefully that's focusing. But that was my smalls exchange. Love this, Annette. Thank you so much. I actually caught up with her and took a picture uh, of with her and I with that, um, that piece. Um, and then the other thing, the last thing that I acquired while I was out there, and of course I had to load all this stuff in my car. It's a good thing I drove and didn't fly. Um, but I won the door prize. They had a raffle. We were um, collecting money for uh, a school in that school district in that area, a closet, you know, to help um, underprivileged children uh, from low income families um, with clothes, school supplies, backpacks, whatever. And uh, so we were raising money for that and I did enter the raffles, but I didn't win the raffles, but I did win a door prize. And I got Barbara Hill's basket from Keepsakes. It came all wrapped beautifully with cellophane. So it was all wrapped up in cellophane with this bow on the top all in this nice basket and it was loaded with goodies. So I'm gonna show you what I got. The first thing I got, uh, the one thing I oh, absolutely love, she stitched up this, Life's a Stitch pillow. And look at this, with this little, beautiful, oh, I mean, I just love this pillow. So cute, that can stay out year round. Um, it came with a bundle of clothespins that I can uh, make a project with and um, a keepsakes floss drop. And it looks like this might be um, floss keeper. It looks like it might be a good corner gauge too if you wanted to use this to measure out a margin. Also this one, and this is actually the Cat 310, the little black cat that they have taken in that is their store cat. And um, it's another floss keep, wooden one. And then there was this little mouse pattern in there. So I got that little um, by Lindy Stitches, little mouse pattern. And she had also given me these um, stickers, uh, sticker plates, a set of 10 by Lindy Stitches that I can put on the back of my, um, my work and put the information on the back. And I love that, love that. I am definitely gonna be using those when I ever get anything finished because I need to stop all these uh, whips. And then this magnetic board, it's an easel board. So it'll sit up and you can, and she put a little note on there, you know, that I can use this to display my stitching on. So, love that. And then there were a few more patterns in the basket. 
This one is Heart Full of Gratitude by Cottage Garden. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Got that pattern in my basket. And also this one by Red R Sampler, cross stitch pattern by Hello. Hello by Liz Matthews. Look at that, so pretty. And this one, English Garden. Um, but by Sampler's Not Forgotten. Oop. That was another one in my basket. So I got all these um, beautiful patterns in my basket. This one, Brambling Rose by, um, who's this by? Summer House Stitchworks. Got that one. Gotta be careful the patterns on the back. <laughs> so. And Twin Peak Primitives Message from Stitchers. A Twin Peak Primitives uh, pattern. And I think that's it. So a basket full of goodies. And I was just thrilled to death. I, I was telling the ladies at my table, I said, I, I will get raffle tickets, um, but I don't ever expect to win because I normally don't win. I usually ex just... It's just going to be for the cause. Um, and I said, because I I think maybe out of all of the raffles and things like that and, and fundraisers I've been to, I don't think I've won anything, actually. I don't think I've ever won anything. Um, people I've been with have won things. Um, but I won that basket, and I was just so thrilled, thrilled to death. So thank you, Barbara, if you're watching this. Um, thank you so much for your basket. That was so sweet. And now I want to show you um, what I started working on. I didn't get a lot of stitching done after StitchCon. I didn't get a lot done at StitchCon. I haven't gotten a lot done after. I showed you, I, I started on the I'll Be Home series. I did a couple of days on that one by Twin Peak Primitives. And um, then my family showed up. I, my mom and her husband came um, and uh, stayed for a week or so. A couple of days after they arrived, my daughter, her husband, her two boys, and their two dogs came um, to stay with us until um, they're moving up here to uh, Fort Belvoir, uh, Virginia. And uh, he's stationed in the army. So they were waiting for their housing. And that was just a whole mess. Um, my daughter was just done by the time. So even, even up to the day they were supposed to move in, they couldn't, they didn't have the keys to the house. It just was a whole mess. Anybody who's ever done military moves understands that, you know, you're at the mercy of, you know, your movers and all of that. They decided they wanted to do pods this time because they had a terrible move where the movers broke a lot of things and lost a lot of things when they moved from Fort Campbell to um, McDill Air Force Base in Tampa, Florida. Um, from Tennessee to Florida, they had a horrible move there. Then they moved back to Fort Campbell. I mean, it's just this could be a long story. Um, they were told several different times, you know, which house they were going to have, then it switch and the date they were supposed to move in. So they came with a U-Haul full of things, um, kept things in our storage unit. Um, they were sleeping in my craft room. I have a large craft room. They brought their mattresses and they were laid out on the floor in mattresses or sleeping on the couch in the, in our uh, family room. Um, because I already had my mom and her husband sleeping in my guest room. I had my stepson here in his room because uh, normally if he's not here, his room's available. So we had a house full. Uh, Fourth of July, my sister came out with her kids and, you know, with four dogs and three teenage, almost teenage boys, preteen, um, running around the house. And like I said, I couldn't even get in my craft room really. I mean, I could walk around the mattresses to get in here if I needed to, but I pretty much stayed out. I let this be their room. So I couldn't get to my stitchy stuff. I did set some stuff aside um, so that if I had some opportunity to pick up some stitching, if people were out and about doing something or still sleeping and I got up early or whatever, um, that I could stitch some. So I did do a little stitching, long story short. And I worked on, um, because I want to do Chris, the Christmas in July. I joined the, the Facebook group, Christmas in July stitch along. And you're supposed to be stitching on something every day. <laughs> 
and um, of the month of July, and I didn't get started till July 8th after everybody moved out, uh, left. Got my daughter semi-moved into her house and things like that. So I was able to pick up Christmas Garden last night and this morning. I worked a little bit on this one, and this is what I am going to be working on for the weekend because I'm also going to do um, Stacy the 911 Stitcher has a Facebook group. She's a YouTuber, has a Facebook group. And she's doing a um, stitching weekend where you you post a, a start picture and you stitch as much as you can over the weekend. And then you post a picture after the weekend to show how much you were able to get done. And this is going to be my piece that I'm going to try um, to work on over the weekend um, because I am doing Christmas in July and also the stitching over the weekend. So I did this morning, I, you know, before I started this video, I was working while I was having my, drinking my coffee, did this basket down here and started on here. So I did get a little bit then in this morning, a little bit in last night. So that's what I've been up to. This one is um, Christmas Garden by Blackbird Designs. And I have it in this book, Home for the Holidays. And it looks like this. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this one already. So I'm working up here. I did this basket. Uh, I need to fill in the flowers. I have already done this one and the, these two motifs and a little bit of the border here. So I'm going to be working on this this weekend and see how far I can get on this one because now my house is quiet. My husband and my stepson actually left today um, to go out and it's just odd. After having nine, 12 people in my house and four dogs running around barking at every noise they hear. It's just so weird. I still have my two little dogs, but they're sleeping. They're taking a nap. Um, my one, she likes to sleep on the bed down here on the floor in my craft room. So on her dog bed. And the other one's probably laying upstairs. So one's guarding the downstairs of the house. The one is guarding the upstairs. I have my two uh, little tiny guard dogs. They're small. <laughs> it's like their doorbell alarms. Their alarm systems is what they are. So um, I'm gonna be working on this one. And then I have some more pieces that I wanna to try to, the Christmas pieces that I wanna work on. But I, the colors I'm doing for this one are not the called for. Um, I didn't have the called for when I started this back in February. Like I said, I've been building up my stash of threads. And I, um, so all of these are uh, Victorian motto, except for classic color works. Uh, for the red, I'm using Cherry Cobbler. And then I'm using Victorian Motto Autumn Weave, Victorian Motto Bronzed Green, and Victorian Motto Homestead. So these are the colors that I'm using um, on this 16 count piece of fabric. This is what I'm using. And I did not write down what color this fabric is. It has a slight slight, slight green hue to it. That's why I thought it'd be great for a Christmas uh, one. It's a very primitive, mottled, slightly green 16-count uh, Ada fabric by P Picture This Plus. And I'll have to look and see if I can figure out what color that is and put that on my um, piece of paper. But I did start that in February and worked on it a couple of days and then set it aside and actually put pulled it out um, yesterday to try to start working on for my Christmas in July. Um, Whipgo, the Whipgo numbers were called, but I haven't been working on, I wasn't able to get in here and pull out my um, my Whipgo piece, but I can show you my Whipgo board, which has moved nowhere. Um, the numbers called were two and 12, so two and 12. And those were both for me to work on Sweet Dreams for 10 hours um, each. So I need to work 20 hours on Sweet Dreams. And it's one of the lavender and lace ones, and I forgot to get it out. Um, I haven't done anything to it. So if you want to go back to uh, my whips, the one that says most um, mostly ladies whips. It has all my lavender and lace ladies. She's in there. It's a whip that I started way back, probably early 2000s. Um, so I wanted to get her finished and that's why she's on my Whipgo board. But as you can see, I also didn't finish. I still have a few other ones that I still have to work on. So hopefully by the end of the year, I will have, have completed my Whipgo board. I'm still planning on trying to work on these Whipgo pieces. 
but all I have finished are the ones that are highlighted. So I still have to work on these five. So I have to work on Sweet Dreams um, for 20 hours. Guardian Angel, she's another uh, lavender and lace lady that would be on my whips that from way back. And uh, her, she's a finish because there's not much left on her to work on. And what is the other one that I don't have? Oh, to work on 10 hours on my trick or treat. The one that I had, was working on before uh, on my last video. And I did not get any more progress on that one, so there was no sense in showing that to you. I do want to show you how I keep track of, really quick, my monthly whip trackers that I do. So this is the one right now that I've started for July. So you'll see here that I was able to work on, um, oh, I was working on Shores of Hawk Run. That's what I was working on. So I did work on it a couple of days. These were all the days of the month of July that my family was here, plus at the end of June. So I marked it so that I know why wasn't I working on anything? What was going on? Um, so I did get a couple of little days of working on Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. And that is right here. And like I said, that's going to be a memorial piece for my dad. And I did work on it a couple of days in the end of June when I got back from, I forgot, this was another whip I was working on. See, my, it's just been crazy this last couple of weeks with everybody here. So what I had done was pick this up. This is a piece of 16 count Ada fabric that I just bought at Hobby Lobby. And then I coffee and tea dyed it a la Pris Priscilla and Chelsea, the Real Highs of Housewives of Cross Stitch. Um, I followed their tutorial and did this piece of fabric, but I had already had this block finished. And then I had already outlined this block. So what I was able to work on the end of June and those couple of days in the beginning of July was this block. But then um, my family left because this was a piece I had sitting out and I thought now I can get to my Christmas stuff. I can actually get in my crafting closet. And I wanna, let me show you what the, before I get off on my tangent here, show you what it's supposed to look like. So I've actually done this block and I'm starting on this one. And like I said, over here, I'm gonna put the my dad's name and the date that he passed away um, in this block. And I'm gonna hang this picture over his urn. I do have his ashes. They're actually on the other side of this room. Um, so this, I was able to work a couple days on this piece, but then I, I'm gonna put it away to work on my Christmas in July. And then I'm wanting to maybe try to work on it some more in August and finish that block. So um, where I was going before I, stopped myself and got side waylaid and sidetracked because you know squirrel I do that with my whips and my cross stitch and I guess I'm gonna do it with my videos too but I I downloaded these if you probably all I did was lock um, go to this site here um, it's um stitch all the things and she has all these freebie charts that you can you can print out you can download and print out and so this one is the monthly whip tracker. And I love this. I can list all of my whips and, the, and then I just mark the days of that month that I worked on it. I just filled out that this says July of 2021. And so far, this is what I've done for the month of July. I worked the two days on the Christmas garden. I, you know, I got started a little bit last night and this morning. And then these couple of days, I worked on Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. Um, the previous month, June, I got a lot of scribbles in here because I always end up scribbling up all my stuff, but if it's on my whip go board, I try to put it on here with a star and to indicate that I need to get work on these. The only thing I actually worked on last month was pandemic. I got, you know, I needed to work 12 hours on pandemic. I got that in, but, um, and when I do a new start, I also indicate these are new starts for the month. Look at all these new starts. Look at all these new starts. And when I started, I just put a circle that indicates I started this project on that day. I started this project on this day. I started this project on this day. So, um, and those are the days that I worked on each of those pieces. Some of these I listed because I was planning on working on them and I didn't get around to them. So that's just the way that goes. So if you're interested in that, go to that, uh, you know, just go to a website called Stitch All the Things and download these uh, whip trackers. And she has a whole lot of other charts that you can also download. 
but I love those and I keep track that way. I also keep track by my sheets, my progress sheets that I put in each project bag with the project. Keep track that way. So these are just two ways I keep track of my stitching and try to maybe tell you guys the truth when I, <laughs> instead of me going, I don't know, I think I worked on it five days uh, this year. Instead, I know I've worked on something so many days. I can't tell you exact hours because normally I don't keep track of hours. I counted a day if I've at least got two or three hours of stitching on it. If all I did was pick it up and stitch for 30 minutes and then I have to leave or go do something and I don't get back to it, I really don't count that as a day. Usually a day for me is anywhere from three hours, two or three hours to, um, Sometimes I can get as much as seven or eight hours if there's nothing going on that day and I decide, you know what, I'm going to sit down and I'm just going to stitch today and watch YouTube videos and then just relax. Um, I can get seven or eight, nine hours of stitching in. Uh, the average for me is probably three to five hours. Uh, I did retire a couple of months ago and my life has still been really busy, um, but enjoyably busy. I don't have to get up and go to work now. I can stay up and stitch till midnight, one o'clock in the morning if I want to. <laughs> and it's just been awesome. I love it. Um, the only other thing now I wanted to tell you guys about, I wanted to remind you again about my stitch along that I'm going to start um, August 1st. And it is work on any Twin Peak Primitives. It's going to be called, I'm, I'm guessing I'm going to be calling it the Twin Peak Primitives sow stitch along um and the one i have picked that i'm going to work on is one nation under god can't wait to get started on this love these patriotic pieces and um so when i last showed this to you i had this and some of the the flosses for it and i was able to finish kitting this up so i've just got it in a bag here um and i found a piece of fabric so I'm going to be stitching mine, mine on 16 count beautiful beige Ada. And this is a 25 by 36 inch piece, so it should be plenty big enough to stitch that on. And I have picked out all of my threads and put them on a floss drop. So these are my, and they're messy because they've been just stuffed in the bag. I haven't done anything with them yet. But I have um, the Weeks Dye Works. There's a couple of, um, Here's this one, Classic Color Works. And I've switched in a couple of Victorian mottos in here. And there is a DMC White. I think they call, when they call for um, the over-dyed ones that are pretty much white, um, most of the time I just put in white. There is this color here. Um, this one is called, oh, this one's DMC 3024. That one's kind of an off, almost a grayish. A very 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 light gray and this one color let me see real quick it's a week's dye works and it's called whitewash so I do have this one that's the white color um, but look at it. it there's not really variegation in it and and I did order this when I ordered the chart but I know I'm gonna need more than this so some of the elements that are white I'm just gonna use um, just the DMC white, because they're very similar. So parts of the design will be stitched with the white, uh, the whitewash by Weeks Dye Works, and the rest I'm going to just use DMC white. Because why buy, you know, three skeins of this when it pretty much just looks white, and you can't really tell that big a difference. I'm not going to stitch them right up next to each other. I'm not going to have both of them stitched. Um, when I do things like this, it's like this huge house right here that I'll stitch in the DMC white but maybe I'll use the whitewash like in the flags because there's not that much there and the eagle's head and things like that but where I have that house that's just going to be DMC white because that's a lot of white thread and I don't think it's gonna make that big a difference. So not worth the added expense of buying several of the whitewash skeins compared to just getting using DMC. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have my extra flosses in here, just in a, a snack bag, a Ziploc bag. So 
So I am all set. So August 1st, Twin Peak Primitives Stitch Along. Twin Peak Primitive Sow. And um, that's gonna start then. So I do know um, this month I'm gonna be working. I can't give you exact, exact, exact because when I do, it ends up changing. Um, but my plans for the rest of the month are gonna be trying to do um, most mostly Christmas. But I am going away to a crafting weekend to Massanutten with a handful of my girlfriends. We started this two years ago <clears throat> where we just get together and we craft. Uh, some ladies do uh, card making, uh, scrapbooking, knitting, um, diamond painting. Uh, one lady's working on calligraphy one time when we went. Um, I do my cross, I'm gonna take my cross stitch. I am gonna take a diamond painting. Uh, I just ordered one that I wanna do. Uh, it's, it's a wine picture. I wanna put it near our, we have a, like a bar area in our rec room, in our recreation room. Down here in the basement, I wanna um, probably start working on that. That's supposed to come in the mail today. Um, so I will be working on cross stitch at my um, crafting weekend at the end of the month, but it, I don't know what I'm taking yet. I haven't made that decision yet. Um, Cause I just, I can make a decision now and it can change in a week. Um, but as of right now, this weekend, I wanna try to work on my Christmas garden by Blackbird Designs. And then we'll see where the wind blows. But I thank you guys. If you've lasted through this whole long rambling video, I thank you so much for sticking in there with me. Um, thank you for all of your wonderful, kind comments, and um, I just love this community, and I'm so glad you guys are going to uh, join me in my journey, and um, and just for the love of cross stitch, and I pray you guys have a wonderful uh, next couple of weeks, and I plan on coming back probably after... I might be able to get a video in before my crafting weekend. If not, I'll do it after um, because I still have uh, my stepson here too and we end up doing things with him and stuff. So I don't know what we got. my husband's going to have planned. But um, we, um, by the time I get back from my crafting weekend, he will be back um, at his mom's house and it'll just be quiet here. It'll just be my husband and I for the most part. So I should be able to get to some semblance of order um, not having uh, family here every day, um, filling up my house with activities and noise, but it has been so enjoyable. I am so happy to have um, my daughter and her family back here, my two grandsons back here in Virginia with me, and um, they've been gone. They've been gone. They've been in Tennessee, Kansas, Florida, and finally he's stationed here in Virginia. So that, and I believe he's going to ride, his plan is to ride out the rest of his enlistment here um, until after his 20 years to retire from the army. Um, I believe he's going to retire here. So they'll, I think he's got still seven or eight years to go until he can retire. So, um, and start a second career. And um, I think this is going to be just wonderful having them close. Uh, it was fun having them all here. It was fun seeing my mom. I haven't seen all of those family members I haven't been able to see since before COVID. It was Christmas of 2019. I haven't seen my mom. Um, most of us are fully vaccinated and we felt safe being all together. And it was wonderful. I had my other daughter come visit with my granddaughter and it's just, it's it's been a crazy, wonderful, wild and beautiful time. So um, I will be back in a couple of weeks to show you guys what I've been up to. And I hope you have just um, blessed time and get lots of stitching done and just spread love and joy. I love you guys and you have a great day. Bye-bye.